You're watching W33BY, Detroit Highland Park, Michigan. The views and opinions expressed on the following show are not necessarily the views and opinions of W33BY, its affiliates, management, or sponsors. Dear gracious God, our Father, Lord, we pause to say thank you. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for this day that you have made, a day that we have never seen before. We ask that you go along with us and stand by us. Bless this broadcast, Lord. We thank you for the dream of Dr. King. Lord, we thank you that we are able to keep this dream alive. Lord, we ask that you go along with us and stand by us as we continue to, to march, as we continue to lead others in the right way, and we will continue to give your name the praise as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hello, and welcome to the fourth episode of the Poor People's Campaign. Poor people, unite. unite! And we should be saying, how much is too much? And when is enough enough? This brings to mind a uh, very prolific poet and writer that used to, uh, Martin Luther King used to use to um, open up his rallies, open up his marches, and his campaigns. Uh, you know him as Curtis Mayfield. Curtis Mayfield was one of the most prolific writers and poets you will ever know. Uh, reminded me, there was one thing that Curtis wrote one time that Dr. King would always use to open up his rallies. Keep on pushing. You remember that one? Keep on pushing. Yeah, that was one of Dr. King's favorite songs that he would use. He would also use to go into march and to battle and to protest People get ready. I'm sure some of you remember those. People get ready. But what we're going to talk about today, we're going to talk about America owes you. America knows that they owe you. What you need to do is join us on June the 4th, downtown Main Skillman Library, where we're going to be convening all the poor people. See, right now we're 38% 38 poverty here in Detroit which is 83.7% is African American. What we need to do is to fight this together. Uh, Scott, Mr. Scott, can you tell me anything about some things that's happening that we need to be involved in right here? Well, we have so many things, Mr. McCarthy, that we're involved in. Uh, you kind of said it's just so important for all people. We, do, we, keep, we keep reiterating this, all people, all color, all race, all nationality, we are calling on you to come out, be there. Mr. McCarthy, we want everybody to be there. This is going yes. to be historic. Yes. And I'm excited. It is. Uh, Reverend Johnson, are you excited about I'm this? I'm very excited. SCLC Detroit, we are just so excited. We're calling you to come out. Uh, we ask you to be a voice. Stand up. We are all in the community. Me and Mr. McCarthy, Mr. Johnson, we are in the community. We're talking to people. We're getting your responses. And so we're asking you to come out, be a part of this. Again, that's, uh, that's going to be Saturday, June the 4th at 1030, downtown Main Library. Uh, poor people, unite. unite. We also have with us, we have Pastor Sam Johnson. He's our Next Generation Leadership Conference. His job, I'll let you tell us yourself. Go ahead, Pastor. My job is to encourage our young generation that it is more that we can do with our time, with our effort, with our energy instead of um, using it towards negative things. And the way we get things done, I, it was always asked the question that I was asked, can anything good come out of the hood? And I'm a firm believer that, yes, it can. It, it's some more teachers mm -hmm. that's right in our neighborhoods. It's some more mm -hmm. doctors that's right in our neighborhoods. It's some lawyers that's right in our neighborhoods. But they will never know who they are if we don't get out and plant that seed in their life to let them know that they are somebody. Um, the word of God speaks of um, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Mm. And, and Nazareth mm -hmm. was not the best place mm -hmm. considered in the word of God. 
but that's a place where Jesus came from and something good came out of there. So I am a firm believer that no matter where you at, whether it's Brightmore, whether it's uh, East English Village, whether it's uh, the worst neighborhoods that you may have be, that you can be in, we coming for you to let you know that we can do better. We're going to build our neighborhoods up. We're going to do things that, 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 can, that we won't even imagine doing. If poor people come together, we're going to get the job done. Poor people, yeah. unite. See, there are some, so many things that we have that we need to do as one. There's never been since the history of our African-American people here. 1619 is when we arrived in Jamestown, Virginia. We arrived as indentured servants, which immediately turned into chattel slavery. You know, white America, I call them Jim Crow. Jim Crow took advantage of us real quick. And America owes us. And for what reason, I don't know. The Indians have gotten their reparations. Japanese has gotten their reparations. And you can go on with the American Indians. They got the lands and the uh, casinos. I guess that was supposed to be our 40 acres in the mule that we never got. We never got a 40 acre in the mule. But they owe us. They owe you. And if you do not come together for one time in your life, if never again, you need to come together and meet us downtown June the 4th as we bring you together and take your concerns and put them into one package. Can you imagine 38% poverty level turning into 38% voting power? Can you just imagine that? That's what we are. That's what's so historic about it because it's never been done before. But with us being listed as the poorest city in the country, that's crazy. This is Motown, the Motor City. We've gone so far with the music industry that it's gone now. We've gone so far with the uh, automobile industry, and you know what that brings to my mind. The uh, $2.5 million billion dollars that the Ford company put over in Mexico. Do you not know that our 25%, 25 and down, should I say, of our working age youth are unemployed? They are unemployed. So what we need to do together Come together. SCLC is here for you. We've been gone for a little while, but we're back, and we're working. We're doing things for you. We have a very special guest that's going to be joining us today, and I just can't wait, and I'm going to wait to tell you who it is. But this is lady. She's been responsible for SCLC being back here in Detroit, and she's joining us today. She's just been a pillar in the community. So what I want you to do, Pastor Sam, tell me something, our youth. Where are they about right now as far as what we should be doing? Are their minds even coming around to what we're talking about? Our youth at this point, where, where I stand because I, I consider myself a uh, youth in this generation. I'm only 30 years old, so I definitely <laughs> consider myself youth in this generation. And where our youth stands at right now, it's to a point where a lot of them have no concern, they have no respect, they have no um, manners. If we look around every day, it's something different on our TV about our youth. It's something different going on in our schools every day about our youth. There's something different with the parents about our, our youth. And it takes time to where we have to show more love. We have to show more concern to let them know that they can be more than what the streets has to offer them. They are more than, you know, what the devil has designed for them to be. And it takes time where parents have to start now being parents instead of best friends to their kids amen you know and, and being there with them and doing different things with them and, and, and instead of turning up with them and doing things that the streets would do with them you have to turn these things around and to let them know that they can make it in spite of the adversities that they face every single day with the streets so i'm here to let you know from the neighborhoods young and old we're coming for you to make a difference and with god there is a difference there is no failure in christ poor people you Tonight, you know, as we sit here each and every week, we're into the fourth episode of the Poor People's Campaign. We've been, and we want to thank you for the responding, the way you've been responding and calling and asking questions. We want you to know that we really appreciate you and we will never, ever be missing from the community again. Uh, poor people. Unite. Those are the call. That's our rally call. We're going to be calling you each and every day. we let you know. We're, going to, we're starting in your communities next week. We're, we're hitting That's the right. door to door. That's right. We're coming to you looking for those poor people. That 38%, can you just imagine the power? Can you imagine the power? 38% voting power. You can reject 
or you can elect All right. at will. All right. At will. What do you think? That's amazing. And Mr. Johnson, you were speaking about the youth. We're calling out to the youth to yes. come out and be a part of the membership. We'll talk to you about that eventually, but we need you a part of our membership. We're calling right. on you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to take a small pause about right here, and we will be right back with you with one of my most favorite guests in the world, Miss Tony McElvain. Right. Okay? Thank you, and welcome back to the Poor People's Campaign. Joining me today, I have a very special young lady that's with me today, and I tell you she's very close to me, and she's a pillar of the community. She's done some things and worked on different situations where she's just made Detroit a better place to live. Uh, joining us today, we have Miss Tony McElwain. Miss Tony McElwain was the um, founder and the president of the Ravendale Community Center. 30 plus years of taking care of the community, poor people included. Miss McElwain, could you please tell us some of these thing, great works that you've done and what you're working on right now? There's so much, and I'm just sitting here waiting. Well, first of all, when you, when you say poor people, uh, right. Ravendale is 85% of the residents are at or below the poverty level. Mm. That's poor people. That's poor people. Okay, whether we want to admit it or not. And I, through that, the residents have to be involved in the total process of okay. changing their own environment, which means that they have to play a very big part of reducing the crime in their area, of cleaning up their blight, Mm -hmm. of taking care of their kids, okay. and particularly they have to have education. Okay. So some of the things that I do is uh, I'm excited about a program called Back on Track. Okay. Where we actually, I'm working with 41 churches and finding kids that have not completed high school. Okay. There are Great. so many kids out there, ages 16 to 19, that have dropped out have aged out, been kicked out, right. whatever the case may be. Right. And they need to get back in school so they can get an education so they can contribute financially hmm. to their own community. And the more children, the more youth that we get off of the streets, the better our streets will be. Amen. We're, we're talking about less crime. Amen. And the problem that we're having right now is they need somewhere to go. That's why I'm excited about the Southern Christian Leadership Council. Thank you. There's a place for them there. There's yes. a place that they can come and play a very big part. Yes. So I'm excited about getting them off of school and, and back in school. See, we can get them in, uh, we give them a trade. Those okay. that cannot go back to school because maybe bullying or gang. We actually ship them a computer with the Internet. Okay. Okay. So we provide all of this. We eliminate all the barriers that prevent them from getting in school. So some of the things that I've done is computer classes mm -hmm. for our seniors, uh, youth programs for the youth, um, uh, building trades for our teenagers. So okay. there's an array of activities that we got the youth and the residents involved in one of my favorite programs was the adults living your dream program oh. where we helped them eliminate the barriers that prevented them from getting off of welfare mm -hmm. so we actually got them off of welfare gave them a trade and worked with them until they were able to actually take care of their own family so i'm excited about that you know that's that's speaking of that we were having a meeting uh, with our national president, and he was telling us that the new civil rights is education. And Ms. McElwain has been there full force all the time. There's so much that she does 
that you can't really amount to all of it. What community uh, organization hadn't she worked with? She's been a blessing to SELC from the beginning since we've come back. And I thank you so much for all the help that you've given us. And you know I came in green as a bean. <laughs> but I had Martin Luther King and the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. I didn't know the community, but I know now. There are so many things that we're joining together to do that I would ask. I would ask anybody who has anything that they would like to ask us right now because we hadn't opened the lines in the past. We're going to open up the telephone lines uh, on our next break. And if you have anything you want us to know, you want us to work on, if you have anything that you want us to do, we're here for you. We're back in the community. And there's, there's been a change of leadership around here. I just want to say that leadership, it's time for a change in leadership. And what we want to do is be a part of that. Right. We want, to, we want to initiate some programs ourselves As for when we bring our people in and we meet them downtown on June the 4th. We want to take their concerns and turn them into legislation. You know, we've seen all of the different reparation things that's been put out there, but there are some things that can be added to a lot of things to make living and poverty a much better place to live. See, there's, we have three classifications. Did you know that? There's three classifications of poverty. You have... Your poor people who just can't afford things. That's right. You know, they, can, they live from day to day. That's right. Then you have your working poor. That's right. Who work every day paycheck and they're paycheck. still poor. Paycheck to, right. paycheck. paycheck to paycheck. And then you have, like my national president says, you have your poor people. We're going to take a break and come back to you and explain to you exactly what that poor people is. Poor people, they need your help. Poor people, unite. Unite. That's right. Welcome back, WHPR. We are SCLC. Poor people unite. unite. And we are here discussing what we are going to bring back to the city of Detroit on behalf of the poor people. Dr. Aaron McCarthy? You know, I would like for Mr. Scott to let the people know exactly what's happening with SCLC. There's so many things that's going on right now till this poor little man, they've been running me around here. I got a <laughs> hole in my shoe. You know, Scott, what do we have coming up? Thank you, Mr. McCarthy. Yes, we here at SCLC Detroit, we've been working real hard. We're working real hard. Uh, right now, we're calling out to our youth out there. Uh, you could be a part of this. I'm excited. All the good information I've heard here for the young people. And you can be a part of this. You can join our membership. $10 general membership for the youth. Seniors, $10. And our general membership is $25. You know, together, we can make a change. We're calling on you. If you feel you don't have any kind of political clout, clout excuse me, any political clout, we are here. We're here. We're here for you. Right. We need your membership. Your membership helps sustain all of our programs, all of these activities we're talking about. It costs, and we need support. We need corporate support. We need yes. donations. And everyone is excited about this. So call our offices at 686 4704 at 313 and call our office at SCLC Detroit. We need you. Be a part of this, be involved. We're all excited, and we want you to join our membership. Together we'll grow. And like Mr. McCarthy said, if you unite, we can make a change. Poor people, unite. unite. And that's our battle cry, poor people unite. Can you imagine the communities that we're going to be starting going into next week? We're going to hit every community 
that we possibly yeah. can. We're going to park on one end of the street and do just like the Jehovah Witness. <laughs> We're going to knock on your door. We're coming. Just like they have the message for you, we have a message for you. That's right. Pastor Sal? If we put the, the forces that we, we use against each other so good, if we use those same oh. forces to come together as powerful as we can be, you know, the Bible, you, you walk by faith and not by sight. Seeing is believing, and, and what I mean is that if you trust and believe in God right now, the vision will come to pass right. because seeing is believing, and we're taking a faith walk. We're taking a, a faith walk through every neighborhood, through every school, through every opportunity that we can, through every church door to, to, under, to let the world know that change is needed. And not only uh, around us, but a universal change is needed everywhere. And so the time has come that we must stick together. The same yeah. negative energy that we use against each other, let's turn that around to a positive energy and use it to build. Amen. Poor people, unite. unite. You know, there's nothing better than to see something united. We have never, we've been here, like I said, since 1619. And no one can ever tell me when we as a people have united. Nobody, Tony. Nobody. We have never united as one. We were taught as slaves to be against one another. You know, to go to, here's your to Uncle Tom. He's going to tell on somebody. Well, those days are over. What we need to do at this instance and from this point forward, we need to be together. We need to unite. We need to just say, we're going to take this thing. We're going to see it through. Because 38% poverty level in Detroit, I really don't understand. This is Motown. This is where uh, Barry Gordy started one of the biggest things happening, Young America. So why would we be the poorest city in the country? I don't understand that. But I know that if we were that and we're that now, we can come out of this because God, through God, all things are possible. All things are possible. So we at the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, we have a goal. And that's also just to work in the spirit of Dr. Martin Luther King. The conscience of America, the face of the civil rights era, we are that, and we're here for you. And if you join us each and every week, but especially on June the 4th, downtown at the main Skillman Library, we need to see your face be in the there, place. There. We're going to be also registering the ones that are registered. Uh, Scott talked to some people yesterday, and what happened? Yeah, uh, I talked to a couple of people on the streets, and I got some positive vibes. You know, you have a voice. I gave them my flyer and said, come out, and they put it in their pocket. So, you know, you have a voice, and we need you to come out and, and, and support. You can join our membership. Come out and support us June the 4th, downtown Main Library, and be heard. Thank you. Yes, and we don't want to forget our convention is coming up, our national, national convention. convention right where we're going to be the guests and hosts in the national chapter. And we're going, we're attending as the number one chapter, the chapter of the year. Can you imagine that? We made history in less than a year. The Detroit chapter, the Detroit chapter is the number one chapter in the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. And that's a big accomplishment, big accomplishment. especially for someone starting from the ground. We don't have the help of the old uh, members, I don't know what happened with that, but we're calling and we're inviting you back to come on back, come on home. We're, on we're gonna be here and we're not leaving. Mr. McCarthy, that's gonna be July the 21st through the 24th in Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. Be a part of that, Atlanta, Georgia, National Convention. We want to thank you all for coming out and joining us today, Pastor Sam, yeah. Vinnie Scott, Miss McElwain, Elder Barlow, Elder Barlow. How you doing over there? But we want to invite you all back for the next time. We'll be back next week, the same time, 12 o'clock. And we say, talk to you later. Come on, people.